Ouch. A Google Core update just landed and your website just lost 60% of its traffic. In this video, I'm gonna do a deep dive into Google Core algorithm updates. You're gonna get a full understanding of how they work and how to recover from them. And if you've been lucky enough to avoid their wrath so far, I'll help you make sure that luck turns into routine. My name is Matt Diggity and I'm a director at the Search Initiative. We're an SEO agency that specializes in penalty recovery. When you understand how the core updates work, you actually look forward to them coming out. Here's a snapshot on how my portfolio did in the previous core algorithm update in May, between 16 and 377% gains. I wanna show you how to get similar results. But before we dive in, what actually is a Google Core algorithm update? Two to three times per year, Google releases core updates. These are large algorithmic changes to how they order the rankings, typically taking one to two weeks to fully roll out. Because of this, you don't want to react and make any changes to your website for at least three weeks. I know it's hard, but for at least three weeks, your job is to chill out. Plus, a lot of the time they roll back the changes, which is another reason just to straight up chill. So what actually happens during these core updates? This is what Google Search Central says about them. During core updates, they make significant broad changes to their algorithms. And in doing so, you can expect to see some quote, widely notable effects. Now what Google means by broad is that they typically change a lot of ranking factors at the same time. A core update doesn't just change the way they look at link quality, for example. There's hundreds of micro changes that occur at the same time during an update. Update. This makes it extremely challenging to pin down what exactly Google didn't like about your site if you got hit by an update. But there's a solution to this and I'll get to that later. Also in the Search Central documentation, they give this paragraph which, in my opinion, is mostly accurate. One way to think of how a core update operates is to imagine you made a list of the top 100 movies in 2015. A few years later in 2019, you refresh the list. It's going to naturally change. Some new and wonderful movies that never existed before will now be candidates for inclusion. You might also recess some films and realize they deserved a higher place on the list than they had before. The reason I say it's mostly accurate is because some websites get totally annihilated in updates. You wouldn't see Spider-Man No Way Home in the top five movies one year and then the top 500 movies the next year. But it's true, you should think of core updates as refreshes. Google assigns a quality score to each website, which is made up of a whole bunch of ranking factors, content quality, link quality, topical authority, a lack of spam signals, and so forth. If they happen to turn up the volume on the need for more content quality during a core update, then new quality scores are evaluated across the internet and we have a refresh of the rankings. This quality score is assigned to your website as a whole rather than page by page. So if you got affected by a core update, it's your whole website that got affected. All your pages will go up in rankings or down or things might look flat. And unfortunately, if you did get hit, you often need to wait to the next core update for a recovery. Many of Google's algorithms don't run in real time. So even if you immediately repaired everything that I'm gonna show you, you may have to wait till the next core update to roll out. So what are you supposed to do if you do get hit? Surprise, surprise, the search central advice isn't actionable at all. Focus on quality content. I'm sure you heard this vague advice more times than you want to recall. But you can't really blame Google. If they gave everyone actionable advice, like you can't use keywords more than 4.8% in your content, then everyone on the web, good or bad, would implement it, and you'd have people ranking with poor spamming content. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to figure out what went wrong and what to do to recover. But before I get started, here's where I ask if you could give that like button a core update. An unsmashed like button is a really bad signal for the YouTube algorithm. So if you could get my back here on YouTube, I'll get your back on Google. Let's start to take a look at the various ways you can figure out what went wrong during a Google Core update. I'll give you a heads up. One of the tactics that I see people use is dead wrong. I'm only showing it to you so you can stay clear of it. After that, I'm gonna show you a couple of correct approaches for debugging your site. Here's how not to do it. If you have multiple websites, in a core update, you may have some that went up and some that went down. Incorrect SEOs might feel inclined to dissecting what the losers did wrong by comparing what's different about their ranking tactics. Here's where this falls apart. First, you don't have enough data. Your portfolio of five sites isn't nearly enough to draw a conclusion. Second, there's too many ranking factors to track at the same time. Let's say you had five websites in your portfolio. Four of them went down in traffic after the update, but one of them, one that you built using AI content, skyrocketed after the update. Would you then conclude that this update was about penalizing websites with natural content? It immediately becomes clear why this approach is so what are the right ways to debug an algorithm drop? The first is correlation studies. This is where you constantly track thousands of websites for hundreds of ranking factors all at the same time. When a core algorithm update hits, you compare how all these websites moved after the update and what were the common ranking factors amongst the winners and the losers. As you can tell, this takes a lot of data. For example, if you found that the average domain rating of the winners increased by 15%, we can make the conclusion that Google turned up the volume on backlinks. There's a bunch of folks that do correlation studies that I trust. For example, Eric 
Lantries, Glenn Gabe, and Lily Ray. I've even had the opportunity to run a correlation study myself where I found that in the December 2020 Google Core algorithm update, Google introduced a ranking factor that punished affiliate websites that had a high ratio of review versus informational content. That said, there are indeed some problems with correlation studies. First, as you already noticed, most people don't have access to this level of data. So you're at their mercy of waiting for other people to release a study. And you're going to have to trust that they analyze the data well. Another problem with data studies is this concept of correlation and causation. Just because the data looks like it's indicating something, it could be entirely coincidence. This is a graph showing how both ice cream sales and shark attacks spike at nearly identical rates in the summer months. For the love of God, please stop selling these damn ice creams and protect our children. Which brings us at last to the right way to debug core updates. As you know, core updates change multiple factors at the same time. It's impossible to figure out what is the one thing that your website did wrong. Most likely there are 30 things you need to improve. So the only way to recover is to assume that everything is wrong with your site. You need to do a complete website audit and recheck everything. And I'll get to that list of everything very shortly. Sure, this may sound like a lot of work, but shouldn't you be giving your website the royal treatment anyways, penalty or not? In the affiliate lab, we call this concept do all the things. And it's no surprise our membership base attracts the best in the industry. What constitutes a full website audit? Let's go into what actually is do all the things. First, we start with technical SEO. Technical SEO issues can completely ruin your quality score on Google. When you make life hard for Google technically, they make life hard for you. To run a technical SEO audit, I recommend using one of the following tools that will scan your site and spit you out a list of items that you need to fix. Ahrefs has a very nice site audit tool which displays errors in a nice GUI interface. And if you already have Ahrefs, then there's no incremental fee. Then we have SiteLiner, which is a standalone tool for technical audits, and it's got a nice interface as well. Then lastly, we have Screaming Frog, which doesn't have much of an interface, but it's free for websites less than 500 URLs. Here's a list of issues you want to be on the lookout for. Crawl errors. Are there certain parts of your site that are completely inaccessible to Google? Or do you have pages on your site that are extremely hard to reach and are more than four jumps away from your homepage? Missing titles and descriptions and alt tags. Did you forget to fill out all these critical places for meta info? Do you have non-HTTPS URLs indexed? A quick check you can run is to Google site colon your domain name, then minus HTTPS. Do you have broken links? And this applies to internal links between the pages of your site and incoming external links going to pages that don't exist anymore. Do you have duplicate content? This is what a SiteLiner duplicate content report looks like for diggitymarketing.com. Do you have indexing issues? Are you wasting Google's crawl budget on indexing tags and images? Do you have problems with schema? Make sure to always check your schema in Google's free structured data testing tool. And lastly, do you have issues with your core web vitals and the overall speed of your website? For a deep dive into core web vitals and website speed, check out the link in the description after you finish up here. Next, you want to perform a complete audit of your content. Here's a quick check you can do to see if Google has devalued your content. Google an exact sentence from one of your top articles and make sure you're still coming up number one for it. If you're not, you're in deep shit. Next, you want to check for thin content on your site. I wrote an article on how to do a complete content audit, and I give a list of items that usually trigger thin content. Duplication, scraped content, auto-generated content such as AI, regurgitated affiliate content, and doorway pages. After that, you want to see if you have adequate topical coverage in your content clusters. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Now I know I just spit out a ton of jargon, so let me explain myself. If you write the best piece of content on the planet on how to saltwater fish, Google doesn't give a it's only when you write on all the topics related to fishing where they start to care. Like how to care for a fishing pole and what's the best lure for rivers. Then and only then will they consider you. How deep are your content clusters? Did you cover all the topics in your niche or just a subset? Get on it. Next, check for keyword cannibalization. You see, Google doesn't like to rank two articles from the same website for the same keyword. And when two or more articles compete, neither of them get to rank. What you need to do is decide which one you want to rank and de-optimize or delete the other one. After that, and I touched upon this before, if you're an affiliate SEO, you need to get your ratios of informational versus commercial content correct. What is the right ratio? It depends on your niche. Make sure to watch my video called All Affiliate Websites Need to Do This After You Finish Up Here. Next, you want to start looking at your individual articles one by one. Check for search intent issues. Google is expecting to see certain types of content ranking for various keywords. For example, if you Google best wireless router, you're likely to see listicles. If you Google buy CBD oil, you're likely to see e-commerce pages. 
pages. In a core update, these expectancies can get scrambled, so check to see if it's changed for your keyword. Next, you want to check the subtopic coverage of your article. When you write an article that you expect to do well on Google, you should be researching how your top competition structured their articles. For example, if you wanted to write an article on how to lose belly fat, you go to this top ranking article from Healthline and see that you need to talk about eating fiber, avoiding trans fats, and not drinking too much booze. You need to include these subtopics in your article. When a core update rolls out, the top articles ranking on Google get mixed up, so the golden set of subtopics required to answer the query might have been jumbled around too. You need to check on that. To learn more, make sure to watch my video on how to write content that ranks number one on Google after this video. Next, you want to fire up a tool like Surfer to check on two things. First, is the word count of your article still the average of the top five in Google? I ran an experiment where I deleted 2,000 words of content to reclaim the number one position for SEO coaching after a core update. I documented the whole thing in this video you're seeing here. Also in Surfer, you want to check how well your words, phrases, and entities are optimized. This is a big one. Google is expecting to see certain words and certain frequencies in your content. If you're writing an article on how to make beer, then there's a sweet spot on how much you should use the word beer in your content. And that goes for every word, even non-keywords such as hops, taste, and pour. When the search gets scrambled up after a core update, then the expected word densities change too. Also check to see if you're linking out and citing where you're getting your information from. There's an example in Google's Quality Rate guidelines where they actually bash a website for not citing its references. They also talk about EAT, which I'll get into soon. For a full content audit checklist, check out my article I wrote on the subject after you finish up here. Next, it's time to audit how well your website lives up to EAT standards. EAT is an acronym. The E part, expertise, requires your content to be above and beyond typical information that people can find on the subject. A, authority, requires your content to be created by a credible source. And T, trust, requires that content should be factually correct and backed up by external sources. EAT is mentioned over 120 times in Google's Quality Rater Guidelines. So yeah, it's kind of a big deal. That said, a lot of the guidelines have extreme recommendations such as requiring your content to always be written by experts. But we have to think about this from an algorithmic perspective. Can the algorithm actually check up and make sure your author graduated from Harvard? Nah, I don't think so. But what it can check for is a complete lack of authorship and credibility signal. So here's how you cover those bases. Include an author bio, also known as an author box at the end of each post. Add author schema to each article to hammer home, yo, this is who wrote this article. And make sure to feature your authors on your about page. The quality rater guidelines also stress that credible website owners should be contactable. So make sure your contact form is up to scratch. They also say that your content should be up to date. So make sure you're updating your old posts and not referencing any aged facts. And last but not least, what I think EAT really boils down to is this. In this tweet, Marie Haynes reported that Google has even said EAT is quote, largely based on links. So make sure that your link profile is the sh and I'll get to that soon. But before that, check on your internal linking. How good is your website architecture? When one page on your site links to another page on your website, that helps to establish topical relevance for the receiving page. Are your high priority pages receiving enough supporting links from other pages on that topic? You can use Ahrefs internal backlinks tool to run an audit. Now let's take a look at backlinks. A poor link profile can easily contribute to a crash after a core algorithm update. Google has said on multiple occasions that they're able to ignore most spammy links. The keyword here is most. Most isn't good enough for your sites. So consider creating a disavow file. This is a file you use to tell Google what links you want them to ignore. In this case study I wrote on how to lift an algorithmic penalty, I gave a checklist on whether or not you should add a link to your disavow file. For example, does a website look spammy? Does it link out to tons of websites? Is it placed in content that makes sense? Is it comment spam? And so forth. Also, you want to take a look at your anchor text. Since the Penguin algorithm was introduced in 2016, Google has taken a crackdown on anchor text over optimization. Each URL on your website is expected to have a balanced mix of target, URL, brand, topical, and miscellaneous anchor text as determined by your competition on page one. As mentioned before, once you do all the things, you might not see a recovery until the next core algorithm update. But rest assured, Google cannot hold back a properly optimized website from where it deserves to be. If you want me to do all the things for you, head on over to thesearchinitiative.com and use the form at the bottom to get in touch. I'd be happy to help get your site back on track.